Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. Two gears have a gear ratio of 8 to 1. The big gear turns at 36 RPMs. What is the RPMs of the little gear? Matter of fact, I got to put a little s here, RPMs. All right, so this is the question, and if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comments section. I'll share the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'll fully explain how to solve this problem. But uh, before we kind of take the next step here, uh, let me go ahead and just clear up uh, what some of these terms mean, just in case you don't know what a gear is or RPM stand for or gear ratio. And, of course, we'll look at, a, uh, look at this problem deeper in the solution, but a gear is basically a round device. Well, it's just, it's a basically mechanical uh, thing and it's round and has little teeth sticking out this side of it. This is a poor rendition of a gear, but this is, let's say a small gear and next to it, it would be turning a big gear. So this gear over here has teeth as well. So you can imagine if you kind of looked inside the transmission of your vehicle, or maybe like an old grandfather clock or old school clock, you have gears turning other gears. So a small gear will turn a big gear. All right, now the speed of a gear, speed of a gear, excuse me, is measured in RPMs, which stands uh, for revolutions per minute. It's how many times uh, these gears are going around in one minute. And a gear ratio is basically uh, the comparison of the ratio of speeds between a small gear and a big gear. Now, of course, you need to understand this ratio pretty well in order to figure this problem out. But uh, this is the problem. All right, so let's just read it one more time for those of you were con uh, that were confused about any aspect of what's going on here with these gears. So uh, let me go ahead and scroll down. All right, so one more time, two gears have a gear ratio of eight to one. The big gear turns at 36 RPMs. What is the RPMs of the little gear? All right, so once again, if you have the answer, put that into the comments section. And uh, of course, I'll show you the answer and we'll go through the solution in just one second. But first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So the answer is the big gear. What is the RPMs? Oh, I'm sorry, the little gear, little gear, excuse me. So the question is we have a, uh, a small gear and a big gear, right? So the big gear is turning at 36 RPMs. So if this big gear is turning at 36 RPMs, do you think the small gears are going to be going faster? So in other words, does a, a small gear have to work harder in order to turn this big gear? Well, if you think that this has to be going faster than the big gear, well, it makes sense, right? And that's why our answer uh, is more RPM. So the actual answer is 288 RPMs. Okay, so if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars because uh, it's clear to me that you know a thing or two about ratios, right? So this problem is all about ratios. And when you think of ratios, you have to think of proportions. So that's what this problem is all about. But if you kind of just figure this out using common sense, well, that is fantastic as well. But uh, really the main idea here from a mathematical standpoint is to understand what a ratio is. And if you're using a ratio, well, we have to use something called proportions to solve ratio problems. Okay, so let's go and get into this right now. Now, again, you know, I've kind of explained the problem a few times, but let's suppose this was the first time you saw this problem. We'll always use the rule of three. Read the problem multiple times, at least three times, uh, to kind of figure out what's going on. Now, again, if you don't know what a gear is or, you know, a gear ratio or RPM stand for, you got to get those clarifications. So if you are a student, raise your hand, you know, ask your teacher. Now, if you're doing like a homework problem, well, you're going to have to look these things up and, uh, you know, figure out, you know, the aspects of the problem because you can't solve a problem if you don't understand it. 
Okay, so uh, hopefully by now we have a thorough understanding of the problem, but uh, what we want to do is model the information in the problem so we can answer this thing. So let's go ahead and uh, take all this information and see if we can better understand it by creating a lovely little sketch. Okay, so here are my two gears. We have a small gear and we have a big gear. So uh, the gears have a gear ratio of eight to one. So what does that mean? Well, you can see right here uh, what it means. It means that this small gear, right, is going to be turning faster than this big gear. It's gonna have to do more revolutions to turn this uh, big gear. Now, uh, what's the comparison? How can we measure the relationship between these two gears? Well, we use something called a gear ratio. And basically, that uh, is stating the following. So if your gear ratio is eight to one, to turn this big gear around one time, well, the small gear is going to have to go around eight times, or uh, it's going to take eight turns of the small gear to turn the big gear around one time. So this is what a gear ratio means. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's kind of um, intuitive that the small gear is going to be have, uh, it's going to have to travel faster, right? So it's going to have to make more turns in order to turn the big gear. All right, so we have small gear and a big gear. And in the problem, it indicates that the big gear turns at 36 RPMs, right? So this is the speed of the, um, of the big gear. So we can kind of put that down in our little figure there. So 36 RPMs is the speed of the big gear, right? So what is the speed? How many RPMs is the small gear uh, turning? Okay, so we can figure this out because we have the ratio between the uh, two gears, right? A gear ratio. So how are we, how are we gonna figure this out? Well, what is a ratio in the first place? Well, a ratio, and from a mathematics uh, standpoint, is nothing more than a fraction, okay? Like one to eight, for example. And it's a fraction where we are comparing uh, the same units of measure. And this is not to be confused with something called a rate. Matter of fact, this is a pretty big topic in math, rates, ratios, and proportions, but basically uh, that's what a ratio is. It's effectively a fraction where the units of measure are the same. So we can kind of build ourselves a nice comparison here between the small and big gear. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so we know that the gear ratio is one to eight. So what does that mean? Well, by the way, uh, when you talk about ratios in mathematics, you can express it using a colon like this, one, and then you could use this word right here, two, one, two, eight. So you can have one, two, eight, where the fraction bar is the word two, or one colon eight, where that colon there is the word two, or you just write this out, one, two, eight, they all mean the same thing. But again, from a mathematics standpoint, uh, a ratio is formally, uh, basically, when we are comparing two units or two numbers by uh, division, i.e. a fraction, where the units of measure are the same. Okay, so we're talking about the RPMs or the relationship between the big gear and the small gear. So one to eight, let's express it this way, okay? So what does this mean? Well, if we have a ratio of one to eight, it means that it's going to take eight turns, right, of the small gear to turn the big gear one time. Now you could uh, switch this around and go eight to one, but remember the problem says that we have a gear ratio of one to eight, so we wanna write it as one to eight. Okay, but uh, the important thing here is to, is to identify what the numerator represents and what the denominator represents. So the numerator represents the big gear, right? It's one, and the denominator represents the small gear. Okay, so again, uh, when we think of ratios in math, we want to think of proportions. And a proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. So for example, if I have the fraction one half, well, another fraction that is uh, perfectly equal to one half is three over six. You see, these are two equivalent fractions. And when you have two fractions just like this, now remember a ratio is a fraction in and of itself. So you can have two equal fractions, this is a, a proportion, or two equal ratios is by definition a proportion as well, or two equal rates. All right, now the important thing is when you do have two equal fractions, i.e. a proportion, the thing that is true is something called the cross product. In other words, if we cross multiply, two times three is what? Well, let's write it right there, two times three. This is gonna be equal to one times six. 
So 2 times 3, of course, is 6, and uh, 1 times 6 is 6. So the cross product is true in all proportions. Okay, so hopefully this is all you needed to know in order to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to set this up. All right, so the gear ratio uh, is 1 to 8. So one turn to eight turns, right? One, tur one uh, revolution on the big gear for eight revolutions on the small gear. And we're told that the big gear uh, turns 36 RPMs. What is the revolutions of the small gear, okay, at this particular ratio? Well, it's going to be one to eight. In other words, these two things are going to be in proportion. So this is the setup here, right? So the big gear um, is going to be, um, uh, again, the proportion here is one, two, eight. But the big thing to remember is that the numerators have to represent the same unit, uh, units of measure, which in this case is the RPMs of the big gear. So a lot of students or a lot of people will confuse these two and they'll flip-flop one fraction. So remember, when you are setting up a proportion, you get, uh, the numerators and the, no the denominators of both uh, ratios, rates, or fractions must uh, represent the same concept. Okay, so here... Uh, what we're trying to determine is how many RPMs the small gear is going to go when the big gear is going 36 RPMs. Well, this uh, speed is going to be in proportion to this ratio, 1 to 8. All right, so at this point, uh, what we want to do now is use the cross product to uh, solve this proportion. Okay, 1 over 8 is equal to 36 over x. How do we solve this? Well, I kind of gave you a big hint. We're going to be using the uh, cross product. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, um, I wouldn't ask if I didn't need your support. Now, I've been on YouTube for a long time. I'm pretty fortunate to have a good amount of subscribers well over at this point. Uh, if I like think 536,000, 530 something odd thousand, it changes on a daily uh, basis. I'm grateful for that. And I have a lot of views, but I don't really pay attention to that as much as I pay attention to growing my channel so I can reach as many people as I possibly can. And so as far as I'm concerned, as long as I can, <laughs> can make videos, I'm going to just continue to make uh, videos on into the future. Again, I've been doing this for a long time, many, many years. But uh, here's the thing. For you, uh, you know, if you need help in math, well, you should ask for help, right? And if you need full-on instruction in mathematics, well, check out my all my full main courses. You can find links to those in uh, the description below. But I also uh, give a ton of value, or at least I try to, in my YouTube uh, videos as well. And if you appreciate this content, well, the best way to support my channel is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so uh, now that we understand the cross product, this is going to be pretty easy to figure out. So we have 1 over 8 is equal to 36 over x. So all we have to do is cross multiply. All right, so 1 times x is x. That's super easy. And then 8 times 36 is going to be our 36 times 8. We can just break out our calculator or do this, uh, you know, on a piece of paper. So 36 times 8 is 288. So that is the answer. But remember, what does x represent? Well, this is 288 RPMs, RPMs, right? Revolutions per minute. And what does that rep uh, represent specifically? Well, let's go back over here. So this represents uh, how fast the small gear is going to be turning. So if the big gear is turning at 36 RPMs, well, then the small gear has to be turning at 288 RPMs in order to maintain this 1 to 8 gear ratio. All right, so this is how you deal with gear ratio problems. And uh, if you stick around in math or physics or science long enough, you'll run into gear ratio problems. They can be a little bit confusing. And of course, we could have multiple gears. I mean, that could be pretty exciting, right? You can have a small gear, a medium gear, and then even a larger gear, then maybe back down to another gear and a small gear. So you can go through all kinds of variations of uh, gear ratio problems. But if you understand this uh, you know, basic gear ratio problem, then that is fantastic. And uh, that was the whole point of this video. Okay, so again, if you got something out of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.